to gather today is the friends, family of Ron and Sandy, to honor them and to celebrate with them 50 years of marriage. It's quite an accomplishment in today's world. I heard of one couple that were being interviewed on the occasion of their 50th anniversary and they asked the wife, in all these years, did you ever think about divorce? She said, divorce? No, never. Murder? Many times. <laughs> <laughs> but it requires commitment to one another and to the Lord to be faithful through 50 years of marriage. And so we come today to honor Juan and Sandy and to celebrate with them the commitment that they've made to each other, to the Lord, and to the institution of marriage. We come in the presence of loved ones, also in the presence of God, because God cares about every area of our lives. He especially cares about love and about marriage. Because marriage was instituted by God for the welfare of humanity and the stability of society. He established it to be the loving, lifelong union of one man and one woman. Marriage is therefore not to be entered into without respect, without careful consideration is to be held in honor among all people. God said it's not good for the man to be alone. I will make a helper suitable for him. So the Bible says that God took a rib from the man and used it to make a special companion for him. She was not taken from his foot to be dominated by him, nor from his head to lord it over him, but from his side, close to his heart, to be loved cherished and protected by him. When God presented the woman to the man, he joyfully exclaimed, This is now bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. Here is someone to whom I can relate, with whom I can share. And God said, For this reason, a man will leave his father and mother and will be united to his wife, and they will become one flesh. God has instructed all of those who enter into this relationship to maintain the usual love and respect for one another, to bear with each other's infirmities and weaknesses, to comfort each other in sickness, trouble, and sorrow, to provide for each other and for their household in all temporal things, but also to pray for and encourage each other in spiritual matters and to live together as heirs of the grace of life. The institution of marriage symbolizes the mystical union between Christ and his church and his love for his church. Jesus adorned with the institution of marriage with his presence and by performing his first miracle at the wedding in Cana of Galilee. And God has given instructions regarding marriage in the Bible. The Apostle Paul writes, Husbands, love your wives in the same way that Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her. And he also says, each one of you must love his wife as he loves himself, and the wife must also respect her husband. Therefore, marriage is to be entered into reverently, discreetly, and respect for God who instituted it. Fifty years ago, Ron and Sandy joined their lives together in the holy estate of matrimony. Today, they stand before you and in the presence of God to renew their pledge of faith each to the other. They are a living testimony before us of God's faithfulness to bless those who seek to live according to His instructions. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we ask your special blessing on Ron and Sandy today. We ask that you would guide them through all the days ahead. Lead them as they continue to grow in understanding and compassion. Strengthen them in the times of difficulty that will surely come and use even those difficulties to deepen their faith in you and their love for one another. Grant that their home will continue to be a place of sanctuary and blessing to all who visit there. And we ask that you would guide all of us who today rejoice together with them and support them with our love, our encouragement, and our prayers. That you would guide us and direct and bless us in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. First Corinthians chapter 13, the Apostle Paul writes about love. He says, Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, but have no love, and become as a sounding brass or a clanging cymbal. 
and though I have the gift of prophecy, and, uh, and understand all mysteries, and have all knowledge, and though I have all faith, so that I can remove mountains, but I have not love, I'm nothing. Love suffers long, and is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself, is not puffed up. Love rejoices in the truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails. And that kind of love is not easy or natural for us in our humanity. And yet that's the kind of love that God has shown toward us through His Son, Jesus Christ. And the kind of love that He enables us to practice toward one another when we trust in Him and seek to follow Him. We also find words of wisdom in the Bible, in the Old Testament, Ecclesiastes chapter 4, 9 through 12. We read, two are better than one. If one falls down, his friend can help him up. But pity the man who falls and has no one to help him up. Though one may be overpowered, two can defend themselves. A cord of three strands is not quickly broken. There is great practical wisdom in these words from Scripture. First, notice the words, his friend can help him up. In addition to being spouses and lovers, husband and wife should always seek the best and to be best friends to one another. To work to maintain a deep and abiding friendship between the two of them, based on mutual respect and protection. Second, as good friends, we are to help one another. When one is down emotionally or physically, the other can encourage and lift up his partner. Third, defend one another. There are many challenges that will come and will continue to come in the years.